Good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Excoffier, and I'm a board member of Actera, Action for a Healthy Planet. Welcome to our special networking session for Promise to Our Planet. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our event sponsors and donors. The Actera team is very grateful for your support, and without it, we wouldn't be able to do our work in the fight against climate change. If anyone here would like to support Actera, please use the QR code on the screen or head over to actera.org donate. Our networking speaker for tonight is Ertherin Cousin. Ertherin is a distinguished fellow of global food and agriculture at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. From 2012 to 2017, she served as executive director of the World Food Program, where she led the world's largest humanitarian organization with 14,000 staff serving 80 million vulnerable people across 75 countries. She possesses more than 30 years of national and international nonprofit, government, and corporate leadership experience. In 2009, she was nominated by the president and confirmed by the Senate as the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. Agencies for Food and Agriculture in Rome. In this role, she served as the U.S. representative for all food, agriculture, and nutrition-related issues. Prior to her global hunger work, she helped lead the U.S. domestic fight to end hunger while serving as executive vice president and chief operating officer of America's Second Harvest, now known as Feeding America. During this time, Earthrin led the operations, budgeting, and expenditures, as well as the human resources, IT, and training activities of this national confederation of 200 food banks across America, serving over 50 million me meals per year. Here is Earthrin Cousin. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining tonight's event. Promise to our planet, Actera's annual climate benefit. My name is Earthrin Cousin. I am the CEO of an organization called Food Systems for the Future. And I serve as the managing director of our impact investment fund, the Good Food Opportunity Fund. I'm also a distinguished fellow at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Uh, I'm a distinguished fellow at the Bosch Academy, the Robert Wise, as a Robert Weizsacker Fellow, working on issues related to climate and climate justice and sustainability, the same work that I am performing at the Chicago Council. And I also serve as a visiting scholar at Stanford University, where I support students who are interested in food security and climate justice. From 2012 to 2017, and this is why pe most people know me, is because I served as the executive director of the World Food Program. And during that period, we were feeding about 85 million people around the world with a staff of about 14,000 people. I also, before joining the World Food Program, served as the, I served as the uh, U.S. Ambassador for Food and Agriculture. Enough about me. You know, let's talk about why we're here tonight the, and the theme of tonight's event, charting progress, celebrating community. When I was asked to share my experiences around this theme, I said, you know, this is spot on because we don't spend enough time, first of all, acknowledging from whence we've come recognizing that we're, when we talk about what is necessary for us to achieve the climate action that is required for us to deliver on the Paris, uh, the Paris Accord goals of reducing greenhouse gases, we talk about them in big picture, big policy standpoints. We don't talk enough about the local action that is necessary to move us forward. And that's critical because without people like you sitting in this room, those big policy goals that we set at the global level, we won't achieve them. We won't get anywhere close to achieving them because the real action for change is action that must occur on the ground. It must occur in our communities. It must occur by our individual actions. And when, People talk about me often, they say Earthrin is the person who is committed to ending hunger in the world. 
but I'm committed to ending hunger in a very different way by creating a transformation of the food system that supports our environmental justice, as well as our human health, and that includes ensuring access to universal access to the affordable, nutritious food by all. Of course, that's what I mean by universality. It means that no matter where you live, how much money you have, you can afford to access a nutritious, diverse meal. But the other piece of action that we must that that is we must achieve to transform our food system is to ensure that we are providing the financial return that is necessary from farm to the plate because too many of the actors who we need to help us with this transformation don't aren't provided with the living wage or viable living wage that they need to could support the work that is required so a sustainable transformation of the food system is very much a part of that local action that is necessary to ensure that we achieve our climate goals and I say that, and I, I talk about the food system when we're talking about climate, because yet in many of the conversations, like the ones you will engage in, and as part of this event, we spend a great deal of time talking about what is necessary from the energy standpoint, from the and from um, the power standpoint, from the transportation standpoint. Very little time talking about what is necessary from the food systems transformation standpoint. That is that that is so critical to achieving our climate goal. Too often we forget that the food system as it operates today emits about 25% of all the greenhouse gases on an annual basis, and not just CO2, but methane gases that are so are, that are even more detrimental to our environment than, than the emission of carbon. And so if we're not talking about food systems transformation as a part of this, the, this, this equitable um, climate work that we are, this climate work that we are performing to create the equal transformation of all of our systems, we won't get where we want to go. We won't achieve what we need to achieve. We won't create the world that is necessary and required for us to ensure that not just us, but our children and our grandchildren have the capacity to not only live in a, in a world that is not in, in climate crisis, but to access that they can access the food and the clean water that they need in order to thrive in that world in the future. And that future is not as far away as we all like to think. As we sit here with California experiencing record snowfalls and the Horn of Africa experiencing its fifth, fifth, count them, more droughts on record that, than more droughts than have ever been recorded in the past. We know that the crisis and the challenges, we've already begun to see those, those challenges that are the, the changes in our climate are creating. So the time is now. The time is now for us to do exactly what this you're coming together to do tonight, to assess where we've succeeded, we've talked about that, but to talk about what we must do going forward. And all I ask is as you share these conversations, make sure you're talking about our food, you're including conversations about our food system. And this means that when we talk, have these conversations, it's not enough to just to just share thoughtful, meaningful conversations in rooms like the one you're sitting in and the ones you're, we're sitting in today as we dial into this conversation. It means getting beyond our comfort zones and including in those conversations, including in the work that we must perform, actors that we don't always agree with whose point of view, whose way forward may not necessarily align cleanly with our own. We're all part of the future, which must, which must mean that we're all part of developing that future 
and finding those intersectional areas where we can agree and work together in those spaces. Aligning where we can, collaborating where we are, where we find opportunities, and eliminating and avoiding the areas where we disagree that don't allow us to communicate and work together. This is the only way that we can build the partnerships, the engagements, the strategies to go forward to achieve the goals that we must. The goals that will ensure that we reduce beyond the what is possible, what, it, what is easy for reducing greenhouse gases, but what is necessary to ensure that we avoid the acute changes in our climate that will make a future on this planet impossible for particularly for the most vulnerable of us on this planet. If COVID taught us one thing is that we can't build fences high enough to avoid global challenges. And climate is one of those global challenges that the fences can't get built high enough, which means that the work must be performed. The goals must be achieved and we must move forward together. So I know we can continue to make progress. We can strengthen our communities because people like you are dialed in and tuned in and ready to work. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's group of speakers and the breakout sessions, but now is the time to network and share your experience with, with everyone here and talk about what brings you here. Bring your authentic self to these conversations, ensuring that we can benefit from your talent as well as the time that you're committing to share in the progress that we must achieve and be ready to think about who's not at the table, that the next time we sit down together, they're right there with us so that we can move forward in the progress for whole of society that ensures that all of society benefits from the progress we achieve in the future. Thank you again for being part of our community and enjoy the evening. Thank you, Earthrin. So now let's network. You will automatically be randomly placed in a breakout room with two to three people and will rotate rooms every five minutes. Feel free to talk about your line of work. What brought you to this event? What are some climate action hurdles you are currently facing? And what are some hurdles you've overcome? Be sure to share your contact info to continue the conversation after tonight's event. In about a minute, the rooms will open. So if you want to quickly grab a drink or a snack, you should do it now. Thank you.